in the movie Field of Dreams. If you build it, they will come refers to a baseball field. James Earl Jones tells Kevin Costner that if he will build a baseball stadium in his cornfield, the players and fans will come. To native plant gardeners, if you build it, they will come suggests something else. If you build a native plant garden, the native plants will attract the native bugs, birds, and animals from around your area. The native garden will form a wildlife habitat, and you will enjoy more native animal life than you would have had you not planted the native plants. That's the implied promise. More than three years ago, we tried that. We removed all our lawn and replaced it with a native plant garden and drought-tolerant native grasses. So this short video shows two things. In the first part, it shows how we removed all that grass, planted a native garden, and how it has slowly filled in and grown tall. In the second half, it shows some of the many forms of animal life we spotted around our garden in the past three years here in suburban Orange County, California. I hope to show you that you can have a similar thing happen simply by increasing the number and kind of native plants around your yard and garden. I hope this inspires you to give it a try in your own garden. So here's what this garden looked like in February 2016 as we took out the grass, put in the beginnings of a native plant garden here in the front yard, and then what it has looked like at different stages in the past two and a half years. And here's what it looks like now. So here's what this slope in the northwest corner of the lot looked like in February 2016 when we took out the grass from this area and then added the dry creek bed and the native plants. And then here's what it looks like now. So that's all for part one. In the second part, I'm going to show you photos or very short videos of some of the birds, butterflies, bugs, and other critters that we've seen since that time.
I tried to get rid of you. I threw rockets and you didn't move, so I think you've got a hurt wing. Say hello. I'll conclude with this thought. Many years ago, after reading Gardening with a Wild Heart, which is Judith Larner Lowry's classic book on native plant gardening, this question occurred to me. What if you were a migratory butterfly who had spent the summer in Oregon or Northern California and was now migrating south? To a migratory butterfly, what must it look like when you reach the larger Los Angeles basin? which is parts of LA, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties, the megalopolis. What must that look like to a migratory butterfly? To most of us humans, large parts of it look delightful. You know, sun, surf, and sand, with mountains and skiing thrown into boot. But to a migratory butterfly who must find its host plant in order to lay eggs, it must look nearly like a desolation. Southern California used to be full of native butterfly host plants, oak, sycamore, buckwheat, coast sunflower, and a hundred others. But now, now it's a very different story. I hope it's not quite as bad now as when I first read Lowry's book. Back then when you planted a tree, it wasn't a native, it was an Australian, eucalyptus. And along our freeways, we also planted Aussie plants. They're drought tolerant, there's no doubt about that. But that's not the point. The point is, many of our native critters co-evolved with our native plants. And they need native plants in order to survive. So in whatever part of the country or world we live in, a good part of what we plant in our yards and parks and along our highways should be native plants whether it's Oregon, Georgia, Texas, California, or Bangladesh, much of what we plant should be native to our area. Okay, sermon over. Reporting live from Fullerton in North Orange County, California, this is Rob Briggs, hoping you're enjoying a wonderful springtime and wishing you success and pleasure in your garden.